and clap for Massey guys, he definitely back again for another one on this one of the Mr. Leaks reaction guys, big up the Mr. Leaks for to tune in to another reaction video, of course the newcomers are there, big up yourself for tuning into this year reaction video guys, I know you guys pretty much miss me up, not miss me, miss you pretty much miss me over the weekend because your boy, I was going to say I was on a vacation but hey, Juliana Dem, <laughs> Jody Lux! <laughs> yes, I Jody Lux. Anyways, guys, um, yeah, so I was doing some projects over the weekend, so I didn't upload any any video, but we'll be back again. Actually, I was actually supposed to do a different video, different video today, but of course, Mr. Lux haven't sent me this video right there talking about House of, House of Assembly and the Prime Minister saying things that, that don't really make sense at all when it comes down to the situation of Domlek, but we're gonna be talking about that in a moment, reacting to these vibrations. This is the first time I'm gonna see this. Stuff, so I'm gonna be taking, taking my time. I also heard that there was a number of other things inside there that's rather interesting, but we'll get into that in a moment. So, guys, before we get into that, guys, don't forget to download the app Mr. Lix Tube app on, of course, Google Play, uh, Google Play Store. Of course, download that, or the link will be in the first comment in the comment box below. Download this on your Android devices or on your televisions. Of course, Google and YouTube analytics have pretty much told me that some a lot of you guys are watching on your televisions as well so you can definitely download the app it's just a click click boom and you in you don't have to go on youtube and go and search from mr lex and the sky i know sometimes i just pop up on the screen and thing but you just click the app boom and if you want to go and see more just click that boom and boom you see me you organize yourself one time anyways guys this video is pretty long house of assembly is the video we're gonna react into today and of course let's get it right there so So all you don't know about volume in the place, all you, all you don't know about volume, no volumes. I'll have to, I'll have to um, ting the audio for this, so you guys can hear. So you say that individuals need to ask questions in November for them to be answered? A couple months later, wouldn't that be, be leaving space for you to make up? If there's relevant questions on things that can actually trap individuals, you're saying that these questions need to be asked four or five months in advance, so then people can probably make up excuses or whatnot, bring, bring lies and whatnot instead of us. If I confront you with a question and you know the answer for it, just like they did Amber Heard, if they confront her with questions and then she slipped up, she slipped up because of the questions that we're asking her at the present time. On the basis of them asking you questions in the present time, which makes it relevant at that time, doesn't that mean you'll be able to answer correctly instead of waiting a set of months for you to formulate probably lies for the questions being asked? Well, that's, that's my thoughts, guys. What are your thoughts? Mr. Speaker, you were entirely correct to say, as you did, to this house and to the world, that no question was put forward for consideration well, at this parliament. And if the honourable member from Marigot, as he just shouts in, that is not in dispute, then it means that he has been dishonest. At the He's talking about, before, yeah, let's continue. He's talking about to the world. There are 395 views on this thing right there. Two hours ago. When I upload videos. <laughs> hey, let me leave that alone. The honourable leader of the opposition. Dishonest. Dishonest about what? Huh. This one is about what? Mr. Mr. Speaker, the interjection by the Honourable Member was that the, effectively you're saying that there was no dispute that there was the opportunity to ask the question. That is not what he told the House when he stood up a moment ago, when he screened his contribution. And whether or not he's happy with my, my, my characterization, then that's a matter for him. But I have no intention of withdrawing what I say. That makes you extremely dishonest. Mr. Speaker, let us proceed. Yes, yes. Yes, can I just make a small intervention with this? Um, recently, Mr. Speaker, you spoke about um, the committee's meeting, and I want to comment on how some members. But um, the Privileges Committee met some time ago, and we had a very discussion. I got it up, and you were there, Mr. Speaker, and I told. I made mention, made it very clear that we had 14 days before and we could ask questions and they, they would tell us if we have maybe um, a, a day and a half or the afternoon to send in our questions. So we'd be able to send in real-time questions. Mr. Speaker, we can make sending questions 
three, four months, I don't know when it's parliament, you know, and sometimes the questions become irrelevant. irrelevant. Ah, very true indeed. Very true. Let's say you have a question to ask. There's something that's taking place in November, October, November, something around that time. October, November, October, October, November, December. There's, there's something taking place at that time. You're then saying that these individuals need to ask these questions during this time for it to be answered four, five months down the road. But wouldn't that mean that the, que the relevant questions put in into the relevant time would not be relevant anymore? Or would not have the same sort of weight? And like I said before, wouldn't that mean that you can possibly potentially make up lies to answer the question versus if they were asked during that specific time? The longer some people tend to wait and they know the questions you want to ask, it's better that they are able to make up lies on these things, you know. So wouldn't it be relevant, and I think that's what Hector is saying right there, wouldn't it be relevant to ask relevant questions based on things that happen within the relevant time? No. You want them to ask questions back in the day and then when something new happened, they, they have to ask questions this, this time for it to be answered four or five months down the road. That don't make any sense to me, guys. What are your thoughts, man? Leave your thoughts in the comment box below. What we are asking, what the, the opportunity that we are asking, seven of us, Mr. Speaker, asking that to give us time, the seven days and the 40 days rule, where we can get a few hours to ask real time questions. Real, relevant questions. What we are asking in the interest of the house and the country that people can, we can ask questions on behalf of the state, our people. I think that makes sense. But when we ask questions three, four months, I mean, last time we met was in November. <laughs> So you want us to ask questions in December, January, February, March. And we have some real time questions that we can ask. That happened um, last week, two weeks ago. Come. Guys, doesn't that make sense? I mean, use common sense. Labor rights out there who like to watch my videos and whatnot and pretend like all you don't watch my videos, then only limit me all <laughs> Labor rights out there, doesn't that make sense? Doesn't that make sense? No? Yes? Okay. That is what we ask. That is what the member of parliament is asking for my And we, we raise that concern with you. Mr. Speaker, and I, I was very disappointed when you spoke and you make mention of that. Yeah, member, so they made that, they made that suggestion to them and they did nothing in regard. Member, you did not raise that question with me. You had a, you at a privileges committee meeting and we cannot discuss the details of the meeting there. Because it's not like, hold on, just need to sleep the point. We have not placed a report that we can discuss. You made a point and that's why I said, when we meet at the different committees, we'll make recommendations. So that means he did. <laughs> that means he did. You say he didn't ask the questions and this kind of things. You say he made a point at that particular time. He did. So wouldn't it be necessary and vital to then make the necessary channels, make the process happen? If that is not the present case, wouldn't that be... Because, I mean, that, why are we wasting... This is... The rules in regards to questions are very, very clear. If we think that we need to improve and we think it's a continuous process of improvement, then we'll make those recommendations, for example, to the Standing Orders Committee. We'll bring the rec Has that been done? Recommendations to the House, the entire House, and the entire House will determine whether or not the House agrees or disagrees. But, but, I mean, but we are just, we gave a report. The report was factual in regards to whether we receive questions or not. So let's just move on. I allowed everyone to at least make, a, make an in intervention. And, and pertaining to that, if they, I, I'm not sure if they ask questions, but if they didn't ask questions, and like I said before, I don't think it makes sense. But hey, if you're asking questions in December and whatnot for it to get answered, maybe you should ask the questions in truth. Ask the questions in truth for you to get some answers, whether irrelevant or irrelevant. What are your thoughts, guys? I think if the UWP, they, that, that's the rule of, of the thing, then they need to ask the questions in November for them to get answered. But that still gives precedence for them to lie. So asking these questions back in the day doesn't make any sense. But if you want to get an answer, whether it's the truth or a lie, that's up to you, I guess. But if that is the standing rule in this, in this place, then, then, then think. But at the same time, like I said before, it doesn't make sense to be asking irrelevant questions that not pertain into relevance. It doesn't. So we we'll proceed. Yes, okay. Honorable Prime Minister. Okay. The point, yes. I think the records need to be clear yes. that every sitting of this house has been convened and conducted within the rules, respecting the rules. That's yes. important. Yes. Prime Minister, are you talking about rules? Scared? You you talking about respecting the rules? 
That's one. Secondly, if 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 there are people who believe that there is more time, I, I agree with you, Mr. Speaker, that we could look at this at the three villages committee or the standards committee and so forth. But we don't want how we don't trust it, but, but every every opposition party since, since before independence and especially post our independence have conducted their house within the rules. And they've always presented the question. I but if the rules not making sense, then that means the rules need to change. And if that has been happening over time, over time again, and the relevant questions being asked at the relevant time is not getting answered, that means it's a fail. No? Anyways, let's move on. Over the relevant committees, um, so let us proceed. I heard that there was a Domlek issue. On the appropriate date from... I don't hear Mr. Speaker. Dembe. I will be taking all stages of the bill shortly entitled Name That's of nice. Proceedings. Oh, I don't want to hear that one. I beg to give notice. Who's Mr. Oh, never mind. To give notice. Let me see what he's giving notice to. Association for Financing of a Disaster Risk Management Development Policy. With a catastrophic deferred option. Standing in the name of the Honorable Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, Investment, Telecommunication and Broadcasting. But first of all, what is that? What is that? Huh? You use, use a fashion police or something? What is that? I thought everybody had to dress in black. No, if I understand, everybody dressing in black, eh? Everybody dressing in black, brothers and sisters. Well, look, one that don't really dress in black, but she's a woman, so they can be different. But normally, fellas dress in black, eh? Well, Uncle this side, he's a pimp. Anyways, I'm not interested no more. Thank you. Well, you will check that out. On April 1, 2022. I think that's it. The government of Dominica regained control, controlling Dominic. interest in the Dominica electricity. Yep, that's it right there. <coughs> While on March 30, 2022, through national media, I told the nation of government's intention to acquire then Dominic majority shareholder, Emera Incorporated shares in the company and subsequently confirmed the acquisition, I believe that this pivotal, strategic and historic accomplishment by this Dominican Labour Party-led government for the people of Dominica should be recorded in the hands of this honorable house. Mr. Speaker, let me make this clear. The United Workers Party was mistaken and short-sighted when it sold government's 72% share ownership in Dominic on such generous terms. Why are they clapping? If on the basis that they did sell it, well, they did so, they sold it um, for whatever reason, and electricity was cheaper for the Dominican people, isn't that a plus? But you took over Dominic. You guys took over Dominic. Dominic. And it is far more expensive now than it was five months ago far more in january from the charts that's one of the things i have to put out today i'll put it out tomorrow brothers and sisters along with some other um, um, um information right there but domlek re released some information january i think it was they had about 20 cents per kilowatt from my understanding of the the thing 20 cents now it's a dollar now what they did what they did they did they, they chose to put the difference and not the actual total amount so people might think it go up by a couple cents it's not a couple cents it go up by brothers and sisters a dollar now from 20 cents to dollar well i think it, it is 80 cents and thing but that is when you guys took over that's what happening so doesn't that mean it would have been better to stay with with whatever the company name is wouldn't that be better Dominic was at the time a profitable company serving the interests of the people of Dominica, who are now sitting parliamentarians, have also come to realize it was a bad decision, though they will not state so publicly. How oh, is it a bad decision when the people of Dominica are paying cheaper when they were under the other company and it's more expensive now? How is it a bad decision, man? What we think that is happening right now is a bad decision for Dominicans because Dominicans are paying more for electricity when you promise them it's going to be cheaper. <laughs> Sometimes 
because I think it's in that stupid little. Me as a Ted Calbas. On March 31, 2022, <coughs> the government of Dominico purchased all of the shares of, Dom of Dominico on 2022. 407,394 shares. Mr. Speaker, government previously informed Emera of its interest in acquiring after you generated. Guys, guys, I'm just skipping this thing because all that is irrelevant information. But for the setbacks caused by Hurricane Maria. Of course. However, this time around, with government's plans and significant progress towards transitioning to... By the way, Domlek, I look at Domlek's stuff. Domlek was making a majority profit, no? Was making a majority profit. Maybe that's why they're increasing the prices and they want to blame it on the rest of the world. But we'll get into that. Renewable energy. No, oh, you talk about renewable energy. We have solar lights up there, brothers and sisters, and solar lights not working properly, no? We have a little wind turbine. I think the wind turbine lights might be better. So I guess that is our renewable energy. And the fact that very soon, with the commissioning of the geothermal power plant in Lola, of course, <laughs> Dominic will have to purchase the electricity generated <sighs> by the government of Dominic. That is what Gara can machine up Montuavito. There's a mini video on May 10th. I, I just got the video yesterday. But anyway, let's continue. Geothermal development company, DGDC. The mayor agreed to negotiate divesting its shares to the government. Okay, yes, great. Which is EC three dollars and fifty cents per share. EC eighteen point nine million four million dollars or twenty eight point six have noted the current listed price of a Dominic share that is three dollars and fifty cents. And you have noted also that government only bought back fifty one point nine percent of the shares, which means if the Unayoka's party had not sold the 72% of the shares that government owned for $21 million, these shares would have been worth at least $26.3 million today. And then, Mr. Speaker, add to that the dividend. Make any basis on how much it would have worth versus the impact that it has on the people? I mean, are we blind and stupid at the same time? Everybody complain about Domlek. Even Domlek workers complain about Domlek. <laughs> because they too in the blonde. They must have think they want to get some discount. No, they don't get no discount. Domlek workers complain about Domlek. Bank workers complain about Domlek. Teachers complain about Domlek. People, farmers complain about. Fishermen complain about. Mayors complain about Domlek. I never hear them complain do like Domlek. I know back in the day when they used to take like plenty. Thing, but... <laughs> that Dominic has paid to his shareholders since the sale of the UDOL have been in 12 financial years. Dominic paid dividend totaling $24.8 million. The only years in total. that period where there were no dividends were 2018 and 2019 because of Hurricane Maria. Of the $24.8 million paid in dividends during 2009 and 2020. I know that. <laughs> I know that, guys. I know that. <laughs> I know that. 2019, 2020. That's 11 years. 11 years divided by... What is it? 24? Fifty-two percent or $17.9 million of this amount would have gone to the government's treasury to meet the needs of the government. Mr. Speaker, these are not the profits Dominic made over the period. Because the profits were much more than that. Bruh. These are the amounts they decided to pay out as dividend during that period. That is why we are confident that this was a decision. But if you pay in dividends, does not mean the shareholders which you are part of will get half of that. Which means that some went to, to the um, other shareholders and 51.9, well, based off what is present I'm talking about right now, if that is the basis of the whole thing, 51.9% would go to the thing, which is 1 point, 1 point something, 1.2, 1 1.2 1 million, 24, yeah, 1.2 million per year, which means about $500,000 was, was given to the, the government of Dominica per year. 
and then the other 500,000. That's why I tell you guys, 500,000 shared amongst how much shareholders it have? <laughs> In the interest of the people of Dominic, we as a people, and remember, half of it, brothers and sisters, was $500,000, which means the other $500,000 was shared amongst a lot of people. How much shares is there? That's how you have to divide it, brothers and sisters. You to experience a negative impact of fossil fuel generated electricity. On our no electricity bills and our finances is immediate. Furthermore, we are all aware of the negative environmental impact of electricity generation using diesel generators. Last but not least at all, I know that every Dominican is looking forward to the day when fuel surcharge in general will be no more on our electricity bills and we have lower cost of electricity from our own renewable resources. I agree that we want renewable resources but it needs to be done properly. You see what happened in America? They try to remove fuel and whatnot and try to go in and create utter chaos on the system. That's why it's important for people to know what is taking place outside the world, not just in Dominica. So when the Prime Minister them come in and say their thing, you wouldn't just fall for it. And then the same thing that has been happening in the United States, they blaming the Russia for it. They blaming Russia for it. When they have their own gas in their yard, they refuse to do they, 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 their own oil in their yard, they refuse to do it. They refuse to because they say they want, they, they're trying to prevent um, this, what do you call that, for climate change. They refuse to do it, so they go into other countries instead of taking it and then causing chaos in their own country. And then they blame it, not on themselves, you know, but they're blaming gas prices on what is taking place in Russia. And they were the instigators, you know, but they will leave that there. Will directly replace capacity currently provided by Dominic's diesel generator. My brother, you, all what you're saying there about renewable energy and all those kind of things, you're not no, you're talking about renewable energy, no? So long you're talking about renewable energy from geothermal itself, we should have already had that done already. It should have been done, just like the international airport you're talking about. We don't believe in nothing you say until we see it, we can touch it, we can probably test the electricity itself. <laughs> have to test it. <laughs> have to test electricity for me, for me to believe what you're saying. The same thing with the aerial tram you're talking about, Gambi, the second longest, and we found that it's not the second longest at all. Well, all you, I don't know if it's you that was saying that, but your, your team apparently, because you say Domin Dominica government is pretty much in charge of this thing. That's what is being stated in the article, from my understanding. So we don't believe in nothing you're saying about geothermal renewable energy. All we know right now at our present situation, our gas price, our oil, our electricity, everything is going up. And the funny thing, I'm sure he's going to blame Russia for this. This is what one of my friends told me. That they, he's blaming Russia for it. Dominic will purchase electricity from the geothermal plant and distribute this. That's not happening, so let's continue. To purchase all the geothermal power yeah. IRC. Dominic will not be permitted to enjoy any markup on the price of geothermal power sold to it in Dominic's commercial model and will ensure that consumers and currently the electricity transmission network is owned by Dominic. However, a new transmission network is being built together with the geothermal project to transfer the electricity from the geothermal power plant in Loder to the Focoli and Sugarloaf electricity network centers and power generation. If that is the case, that's good. But we don't know if that's true or not. We don't know. Facilities. Leave pressure on Dominic's 11 KV network and thereby reducing losses and increasing reliability of the network. B, allow the different, sorry, allow the efficient and resilient transmission of the six megawatts of hydro electricity from the Roseau Valley. And C, provide res res resilience to Dominic's electricity network to minimize the damage caused by hydrometeorological events and to allow for the quick reinstatement of power in the event of damage. But it, let me leave that alone. The commercial <laughs> permits, Mr. Speaker, required for the investment in... So hydro is also good if that is the case. If that is the case. But we're still waiting for international airport eh? Transmission systems and for the sharing of infrastructure and resilience enhancement are greatly facilitated by Dominic's new ownership structure. Network will also, also strengthen as a result of government's majority ownership of Dominic. 
the construction of a way but the majority shares in guys am i say by trying to get the pot this created a major challenge for the government because of the concerns raised by operation and maintenance of the transmission asset i have been comforted by the news that ownership of Dominic has returned to the people of Dominic. Clapping? Are oh, we paying more for electricity? How is that, how is that good? That one day, <laughs> in the not too distant future, they will begin paying low rates for electricity in Dominic. Well, we'll have to wait to see that happen, sir. Just like we're waiting to get the international airport. Worldwide. And see the impact on the cost of petroleum and petroleum products worldwide resulting in a corresponding increase in the cost of electricity. Ukraine war. We are experiencing trying times. The Russian-Ukraine war <laughs> is having severe impact on the cost of petroleum. <laughs> petroleum products. But guys, what we get, we getting our oils and stuff from Russia. Not from Venezuela and China, are we getting oils now? Not from there? What Russia and Ukraine will have to do with Dominica? Are we getting oil from over there? Worldwide. Resulting in a corresponding increase in the cost of electricity. <sighs> this government... And people will believe that, eh? People will believe that. ...is doing everything within its control to reduce the impact on families and businesses. You mean everything except minimizing the VAT, which will, of course, decrease the prices on electricity. But government wants to maintain the same amount of money and not back bond that. Because if you're getting 15% on a hundred dollars, you'll get fifteen dollars. Fifteen percent on a hundred and fifty dollars is not fifteen dollars. Okay, guys, keep that in mind. 15, 7.5, 20, 22, 22.5. That means you get 22.5 on a hundred and fifty percent. A hundred and fifty dollars. Fifteen percent. Versus getting not a hundred. If you decrease that amount. And it goes to 150, that means if you get in 10%, you'll get the same hundred dollars. 115, the same $15 mark you on the 150 dollars. If you wanted to do that, you would decrease VAT. If VAT was a hundred, uh, if VAT was 15 percent on a hundred dollars, and it and, and the hundred dollars increased to 150 per, um, 150 dollars. If you decrease VAT by five percent, you will get the same amount of money. But no, you don't want to do that. You want to maintain that you get more. You want to get $22.5 $22 instead of getting $15. Mathematics is not a hard subject, you know, brothers and sisters. We have urged the IRC, the Independent Regulatory Commission, to accelerate its review on the electricity, electricity tariffs while the government continues to push on to build and commission the geothermal plant. Decrease VAT, sir. Decrease VAT on, 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 on oils and these things, on gas and all, all those things there. Decrease it. You want to keep it the same and then tell people you're trying to... Boy, that's the thing that's make me vex about people, you know. And they'll swallow the scrap easy. We are confident, Mr. Speaker, that with a reduction in the tariffs by the IRC, we can experience a reduction in the electricity rates in the, in the meantime. So you want the reductions on the tariffs, but not on VAT. And so we are urging the IRC to complete the assessment and evaluation and to make clear recommendations on a reduction in tax. But so you can decrease the VAT. I don't understand. It's not a difficult thing. The government is the one receiving VAT. Say, hey guys, we need to decrease the VAT on these things. Bring it to 10%. You will still be getting money, you know. But it's just that there will be less burden on the people. If you so care about the people. But we know, we know the whole thing already. Anyways, guys, I reached 19 minutes of this thing right there. <laughs> but this is pretty much all I'll be reacting to right there, guys. This is what they pointed out to me right there. So, on the basis of electricity, we know that he's saying about geothermal and whatnot, which I think is, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not for the geothermal part, I'm for the solar and hydro part. But if you want to put the geothermal, please don't stop destroying the, 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 the natural habitats that we have to create geothermal. Geothermal can also affect the outer layers, you know, if you don't full up. In internal if you have intakes inside there that is problem the earth will sink different things can happen natural disasters <laughs> oh boy guys do your research on the impacts of of geothermal you see for yourself anyways guys this is pretty much all about for this reaction video i'll post this link in the description below 
so you guys can definitely check it out and of course i'll see you guys in the extra thing the extra next action video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe and turn on the post notification and download the app mr xtube i'll see you guys in the next one Boom,